A good day of Shabbos to everybody. Standing here in the Or Torah tent and wanted to share just some thoughts related to Parsha Sashavua, Parsha Shlach, which happens to also be the two year anniversary of our Bechor Yedidya's Bar Mitzvah, which was a very, very special occasion here at Or Torah, something that we will always have incredible memories of. And who, who knows, maybe Yedidya is itching to lane a little bit the Shabbos. We'll see if we could uh, negotiate that as well. So I was thinking about an interesting idea that I once heard from Hasidic Rebbe's, and that's as follows, that when it comes to the juxtaposition or the connection between Purim and Pesach, so most people, the blessing or the bracha that we give people going into Purim is that you should have a freilich Purim, you should have a happy Purim, and we wish them they should have a kosher Pesach, that they should have a kosher Pesach. And I've heard in the name of Rebbe's that it really should be fakert, it really should be the opposite, that what we should be saying to people for Purim is we should say they should have a kosher a Purim, that they're going to have a freilich, that they're going to have a happy, enjoyable Purim, that's relatively obvious. But that they're going to have a kosher Purim, that they're going to go about it in the appropriate way, that's really the bracha that we have to give people going into Purim. And same thing when it comes to Pesach. To say to somebody, have a kosher of Pesach, men, women in particular, work so hard preparing for Pesach, so of course they're going to have a kosher of Pesach. There's no concern whatsoever that somebody's not going to have a kosher of Pesach. But they should have a freilch of Pesach. They should have an enjoyable Pesach. That all the work and all the toil shouldn't knock a person out. They should forget to be able to sit back and enjoy the mishpacha and the experience of recalling the exodus from Egypt, Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. So that's really the appropriate bracha when it comes to Pesach, that they should have a freilch of Pesach, not that they should have a kosher of Pesach. I heard a similar idea. I was talking to my brother in Eretz Yisrael this morning. And he shared with me that he heard from Rav Bitterman, the great uh, Magad in Yerushalayim, as follows, also the law of a Rebbe, also a Hasidic Rebbe. So he said like this, he said that oftentimes when a Shidduch goes through, when a couple gets engaged, so people say, ah, you know, L'chaim, Mazel Tov. And when a Shidduch breaks off, so people say, ah, we have to daven. We have to really daven, we have to be mispala. But he said it's actually fakir, it's really the opposite. That when a shidduch breaks off, people should say l'chayim, they should be so happy. They've been saved possibly from years of agmas nefesh and years of frustration and years of difficulty. And when a shidduch goes through, they should make l'chayim, they should be mispalal, that the shidduch should have hatzlacha and it should have success and it should be a kesher shal kayama, it should be that the zivik should be all liyafa. So I was thinking that this actually, these two concepts, these two constructs, are actually apropos for describing the week's parsha, parsha shach. We know that the parsha, the theme of the parsha is that of the chet hamaragum, the sin, the iniquity of the spies. That they spoke a dibara, they spoke badly about Eretz Yisrael. That they mis- misconstrued the potential that Eretz Yisrael had latent for them. And there are many different approaches and interpretations that I'm sure many of us will spend time elucidating over Shabbos, what their cheshben, what their calculation was. After all, these were tzaddikim, these were great men. It doesn't make so much sense that they would speak Lashon Hara. And there are different approaches in Hasidic Svarim, in Lithvish Svarim, to try to explain kind of what was the calculation, what was the cheshben, what was the fear, what was it that stopped the Miraglim from giving the appropriate report. But I think if we think about it, so in essence, what happened with the Miraglim was that they saw a situation and they didn't necessarily interpret it properly. They missed the context. They had different motivations or they had a certain filter that didn't enable them to see it kind of the way things truly were. And this is really the message that we talked about vis-a-vis Purim and Pesach, vis-a-vis the Shilch that goes through. It doesn't go through. A lot of times in life, we don't necessarily always have the clearest, the clearest perspective on an issue at hand. And we have to be humble enough and we have to be honest enough with ourselves to appreciate and to recognize that there could be different ways to see something. And particularly like when the Miraglim were in, in a challenging situation, to really kind of work on oneself, to really make sure that they're seeing it with, with clear eyes, that they're seeing it properly. And a lot of times what we think is really bad often is a tremendous thing, is often a tremendous bracha and vice versa. Sometimes we think something looks so good and after a while it turns out to not be as good as we perceived it to be. So this is, I think, a very powerful lesson that we can extract from the parsha, that we can extract from these maisim that I shared, and that is that things are not always as they appear. The Rabbanu Shalom orchestrates events, runs the world in, in ways that are hidden good, right? That in, the, in the essence, sometimes things don't look so good, but in the end, there's a, a real silver lining and vice versa. And really the message I want to leave you with going into Shabbos is just that it behooves us to think critically and to think carefully. And even when something doesn't look as appealing, 
as uh, we would want it to be, we have to appreciate that there can be longer term repercussions that may in fact turn out to be quite beneficial to us. Wishing everybody a Shabbat Shalom Mvarach. It's a also Shabbos Mvarach HaMachodesh. We prepare for the month of Tammuz, which of course is not such a great uh, month in Jewish history and Jewish lore. Uh, we begin the period where we're transitioning towards uh, Churban to destruction, three weeks, nine days, Tisha B'Av, etc. And then on the heels of that, the Shiva Nechemta, the seven weeks of comfort, Shabbos Nachamu, which sparks that, and then getting into Yom Naram. We have a power-packed time, you know, waiting for us, and it all be, kind of begins this, this special Shabbos, Shabbos Mavarchem Tamuz, the ups and the downs, and even though what looks, uh, what looks kind of, uh, you know, scary and uh, depressing and discouraging is actually, you know, could actually uh, be very, very positive. I wish everybody an amazing Shabbos. Be well. Bye-bye.